You take everything we love, all our immersions, all our fantasies, all our escapism, and you just can't help shovel your dog in crap ideology into everything, every single solitary thing. You just got a small taste of a viral rant from anti-SJW YouTuber Heel vs. Babyface. And for those not plugged into the discourse on this one, let me fill you in. So there's a new Bethesda game called Starfield, and in the beginning of the game, you can create and customize the character that you're going to be playing as. This is a pretty common feature in most role-playing games. Now, this grown man had an absolute meltdown, all because the game gave him the option to choose his pronouns. Yeah, that's what led to that rant. So now that you have some additional context here, uh, let's go ahead and watch the full thing. I just want to say something to you, Bethesda. I just want to say a little, little something. There is nothing I love more. Taking my headphones off, fuck that. Bethesda, there is nothing I love more than to, to, to sit down, comfy chair, turn on my PC, fire up a brand new RPG, uh, uh, lose myself, think, oh my god, just think of this world, just think of all the planets I can visit, all the immersive things that I can get involved with, all the fights, all the relationships, all the people I meet, all the places I go. I'm so excited to go there. And you know, I love nothing more than with all of that laid out in front of me, I love nothing more than to be dragged out at every fucking conceivable opportunity so you can fucking current day us! Sorry, did you want to get immersed in our world? Yeah, well, guess what? Fucking pronouns! Fucking gender ambiguity! Fucking current day Californian shit! Because that's all we fucking know! Because we're boring! We're so fucking boring! We can't see past our own fucking reflection! That's the level of our narcissism here at Bethesda Western Game Company. Fuck your immersion. Fuck you having a good time. Fuck you falling into a world and just getting lost. No, no, no. Current fucking day. Fuck off. You're boring. You're fucking dull. You have nothing to say. You are a one hived mind twat waffle. That's all you fucking are. And you wonder why people are getting so fucking sick and tired. You take everything we love, all our immersions, all our fantasies, all our escapism, and you just can't help shovel your dog shit fucking crap ideology into everything, every single solitary fucking thing. Having a normal one, I see. Now, he seemingly chose to keep playing after the pronoun controversy, and he ended up encountering... <laughs> A trans NPC, which stands for non-playable character in the wild, and uh, his reaction to that was predictably hilarious. Fuck off. Fuck off. It's, in it's infected everywhere. Nerves kicking in. Oh, shut the fuck up. I double checked and therapy is free on Turf Island, right? So I would highly encourage this individual to take advantage of his country's universal healthcare system. We don't have that luxury in the United States, so he should unironically get some help. And I mean that earnestly, like actually seek therapy if you are this triggered by a trans person because it's not healthy, nor is it normal. But to be fair, gaming is not immune to controversies over cultural issues. Nearly 15 years ago, Rockstar released Grand Theft Auto, The Ballad of Gay Tony, and I personally remember the discourse at this time. In a 2009 post in the GTA forums, this user pointed out that the blatant homophobia was one of the first things that they noticed in response to the game's announcement, saying that it was sad people were willing to reject the game all because it had gay in the title and featured a gay character. Now, in 2012, Bioware didn't just give players the option 
option to be gay or lesbian in Mass Effect 3. They actually included a gay sex scene, which was very controversial at the time. I know because I remember. And this came after they actually removed a gay sex scene from Mass Effect 2 following criticism from Fox News. But the controversy goes both ways because earlier this year when Hogwarts Legacy came out, there was a lot of discourse about whether or not it was ethical to play that game because if you purchase that game, are you supporting a transphobic bigot like J.K. Rowling? Now, the Ant-Man decided to see what this guy said about that controversy and juxtapose what he said then with what he's saying now about Starfield. And as you're going to see, um, there's some hypocrisy there. I will not be berated, bullied, intimidated into not playing a game because you think it attacks you or goes against your ideology. Boo fucking who? Man up! Fucking pronouns! Boo fucking who? Man up! Fucking gender ambiguity! I for one am shocked that he'd be completely inconsistent here. But to be fair, he isn't the only snowflake to melt down over pronouns in Starfield because Rumble content creator Nina Infinity tweeted about how she nearly refunded the game when it asked for her pronouns. And uh, she was still considering it given how annoyed she was that they dared to ask. And on top of that, the quartering chimed in to defend his fellow anti-SJW comrades saying, the left always tries to gaslight people into thinking they are overreacting. It isn't just the pronouns, it's the slippery slope it represents. Cultists screaming it's no big deal also think it's no big deal healthy young women mutilate their bodies for affirmation ah another transphobe supposedly concerned about mutilation i wonder if he's ever questioned the ethics around circumcision or the literal genital mutilation of intersex babies something tells me that he only talks about trans people and specifically wants to police their bodily autonomy but to be fair when he says that this represents a slippery slope he's right Representation leads to normalization, and that's a good thing. Trans people exist, and they also play video games. So why shouldn't they have the option to create a character that they want? I mean, in a lot of video games, you can create any character. When my husband was playing Baldur's Gate 3, he played as some green fucking alien thing. Why can't we be what we want in a game that is about role-playing and simulation and realism? Why not give them this option? Well, it's purely because of bigotry. Now, Heels vs. Babyface actually responded to the virality of that rant, and he basically talked about his quote-unquote cancellation, which you're not being canceled, but he claims that actually he's not mad. You're all mad. Man has opinion about video game. Internet goes absolutely nuclear crazy about opinion on video game. Is this actually about opinion on video game? No, this has nothing to do with opinion on video game. This is everything to do with going after the far left sacred cow of gender ideology. My brother in Christ, nobody is mad or going nuclear crazy over your video game opinion or response to fucking gender ideology. We're laughing at you because you acted like a fucking petulant child. I mean, imagine if the shoe were on the other foot and a gay gamer freaked out at the sight of heterosexuality being depicted. Wouldn't you laugh at them and think that that's a little bit ridiculous? I'd find that funny because straight people exist. Therefore, I think it's perfectly fine if they are depicted in video games. But I mean, to protect his bruised ego, he decided to pretend like he's speaking some sort of a forbidden truth. When, in reality, he's just a reactionary snowflake who got triggered and melted down. And he can't accept that everyone on the internet is laughing at him. So he's got to make it about, oh, well, this is about gender ideology. And I guess I hit a nerve. No, brother, we're just laughing at you. That's it. It's not that complicated. You don't have to overthink it. But another big streamer went viral as well for the same reason. Dr. Disrespect actually speculated that Bethesda didn't send him a copy of the game because of his recent transphobic comments. And he came to this conclusion after investigating and finding out that Bethesda's senior VP of public relations, Pete Hines, actually has, wait for it, pronouns in the bio. Him. Got it. I got it. Got it. So... I gotta say this, Chance. Just real quick, I gotta—I just gotta get it off my chest. Obviously, we've been hyping up Star Citizen for uh, Starfield for a long time. We've been making it very vocal, right, Chance? Um, we had our team reach out. Hey, can we work with you? Can we do something? We... Due to past controversies there's no way we can work with uh dr disrespect How 
How about just give me, like, l- let me play the game when it when when some of the others are playing it. How about that? Yeah, it's still that's still that's still the case. Yeah, that sounds like Cope to me. But he responded to that video going viral, claiming that he was taken out of context and added, politics should stay out of the video game industry entirely along with people like this. Now, that's such a stupid point to make because everything is inherently political. You can't detach politics from anything. I mean, art imitates life and life is inherently political. If you don't care about politics, it still affects you. But to the extent that something should not be political it's the mere inclusion of trans people why do you view their inclusion as a political point they exist they're not political points or political pawns they exist in reality right they're your friends your family they work at grocery stores fast food restaurants perhaps you run into them and don't even realize it why do you think that them being included is inherently political is it political to include black people or asian people or gay people i mean it's just They're so petulant and so entitled that they think that the world revolves around them and anything that deviates from the norm, well, that's just inherently political. I mean, is it political that when you go to these character creation screens, it always defaults to a white guy? I mean, a black person can claim that that's political. Women can claim that that's political. But you don't see them bitching, right? But Keffels pointed out his hypocrisy in response, writing, You literally became popular by streaming a game that the U.S. Army uses as a recruitment tool. Grow the fuck up, dude. And Hutch chimed in, saying, If pronouns are political, I've got some bad news for you. And he pointed out that doctor is sometimes used as a pronoun. Yeah. And what these transphobic dipshits fail to realize is that cis people also have pronouns. It's not just trans people that have pronouns. Cis people have them too, and we've been using them our entire lives. See, when they say things like, I refuse to use pronouns, they're not actually smart enough to realize that they're using a pronoun to make that statement. But here's the thing. Reactionary gamers, they will continue to bitch and moan about the inclusion of trans people in video games in the same way that they've continued to bitch and moan about the inclusion of gay people in video games. And even though homosexuality in video games is still controversial, reactionaries don't cry about it as much because they've come to begrudgingly accept that society has moved on without them. And them crying is not going to get developers to remove gay characters from video games. And the same will be true for trans inclusion as well eventually. But that doesn't mean that Bethesda is trying to shove some sort of an agenda down your throat that's stupid to think something like that right these companies don't actually have agendas more options simply broaden the appeal and enhance realism but at the end of the day simple descriptive representation isn't going to make or break these games right nobody's buying the game for that the game is going to be bought if it's good right so if starfield is good even the most reactionary player isn't going to want to miss out on that experience unfortunately for this game it seems as if the reviews are relatively mixed i mean they're positive but i've heard mixed things but i mean when it comes to bethesda their inclusion of pronouns doesn't erase their horrific mistreatment of their own employees specifically one of their trans employees because as the mary sue reports farron a transgender woman is suing zenimax which is bethesda's parent company by the way for their failure to provide continuation coverage for her healthcare. In the suit, Farron asserts that she signed a severance agreement with ZeniMax, which stipulated that they'd provide her COBRA coverage 18 months of healthcare coverage after leaving the job on the condition that she not file a discrimination lawsuit. This was allegedly after a year of transphobic aggression in her workplace after she came out, which the company seems to admit if they've asked her to not file a discrimination suit. Oh, and she says she was pressured to come out because her supervisor outed her on Slack during a meeting before she could talk to the team herself. Farron documented all of this through screenshots, recorded phone calls, and more. And long story short, after agreeing to not sue them for discrimination so long as they continue to give her health care, they didn't hold up their end of the bargain, and they left her with thousands and thousands of dollars in medical bills. So they didn't uphold their end of the bargain, hence why she's suing. Now, I'll link you to her four-hour-long video where she goes over how the company fucked her over in painstaking detail. There's also a link to a Stephanie Sterling video that I will include that goes over it in a more concise manner. But, I mean, this is the reality right here of large multinational corporations. The same woke corporations supposedly shoving an agenda down your throats are the same companies who allegedly mistreat and abuse their trans employees. So if these reactionaries feel victimized by Bethesda's mere inclusion of pronouns, imagine how it feels to be Farron. 
I mean, this fuckface couldn't walk a day in the shoes of any trans person if pronouns trigger him that much, right? But this is what entitlement leads to, right? It makes you think that you are the center of the world, you're the main character, and anything that deviates from the norm or what makes you feel uncomfortable is automatically illegitimate. But this highlights the reality of late-stage capitalism. There are no woke corporations, contrary to popular belief. These corporations don't actually have any agenda, right? And to the extent that they do care about politics, it's about making sure that their taxes are cut and they could treat workers as shitty as possible and break up their unions. That's basically their entire political belief system. That's all they care about. Their one goal is to maximize profits, not push social justice causes or increase representation for some political cause, right? That's all they care about. It's just money, period. Don't overthink it. That's their one drive, making as much money as possible. So even if these reactionaries refuse to see it, they have more in common with trans people than they think. But rich capitalists have convinced them that trans people are the real enemies and not the rich people who are exploiting them. And there's a reason for that. They're just too dumb to see it. Woke mom. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke test. Woke ideology. Woke Olympics. Woke ideology. 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 Wo